Okay, good day, everybody. Thanks for stopping by. Um, we're just at Bylong, uh, as promised. Uh, we're here with Steve. Uh, he's got his camper over the back that we looked at uh, in an earlier video. Uh, and today, we're going to do just a quick comparison between the 30-second awning uh, on his 200 here uh, and the Rhino Rack that you've seen on mine previously. Uh, links up top and down bottom. Uh, so Steve's just about to set this up for us. And then we're going to head over and I'm going to set mine up and uh, just give you an idea what they're like to uh, set up in situ and uh, give you a bit of a comparison there and we'll get in and have a bit of a close look. So uh, here we go now. Okay, well, Steve ek 2 ud helping Brett, the Denmarkie, do a compare on two awnings. I've got the 30 second awning, he's got a fox wing, so here we go. Not much to this, unzip the bag. Oh, oh. It's not ideal for short people, so I don't, really don't know how Brett could use it. Flick that off, because it makes it easier. There's a strap on here, which used to fall down and knock the hell out of things. I keep an aerial in this, you'll see why. And this is all it takes to set these up. They call them 30 second awnings for a reason. around hook your hook onto your roof rack you've got a cam up here just pulls it tight I use it to push that up just takes the weight off that leg that's it shade done 30 seconds right, I think I've uh, <laughs> I think I've got some effort on my bath to keep up with that those look pretty rigid in there as well they're pretty um, strong. I've seen people swing off them. I don't think I'd want to because yeah. it's an alloy rack and it flexes a bit. Yep, yeah, can see that moving there. But that's the rack flexing. That's not the awning. That's the actual Rhino rack flexes. Yep, yeah, okay. It should handle up to 20, 30 kilometre area winds without any problem. Have you had it in much wind? I've had it a little bit, but I raped it down. I wasn't going. Okay, yeah. It has one, comes with one leg, which is just a cam lock. You wrap it down off that. Yep. That makes it pretty secure. Option for two more legs. They've already got the fittings in place, but they don't have them. So I'm going to buy the other two legs and put them on as well because they'll Velcro and so do the same thing as the factory leg. So just when you tie it down, they'll make it nice and solid. So could you use a standard tent pole for that? I think you might be able to. You probably just push the, way, the top of your spigot up into there. Yep. Or there's a ring on the outside. But if you wanted to, you could just pull it through that, I reckon. Yeah, okay. And that'd then throw your, the thing. throw your guy line over the top of it and that'll yeah, hold it down good enough. Because that's how you tie them off too, just through that ring. Now, I'm seeing zips on the inside. What are they for, do you know? Zips. Oh, these, yep. They, yep. You can get a full sidewall kit for it. It does look similar to the, the Fox Wing. Very similar. Um, I think the idea is the same. Similar material. Material, I would say, same weight. Um, and once I pull it out, it'll be easier to tell, obviously, set them side by side. But that, I would yeah. say, that's near identical material. I'd say so. Um, zips seem, you know, similar quality. But certainly the structure of yours is a lot more rigid than mine. Um, would you be happy to leave yours set up in a bit of a breeze without this pole down? Uh, up to about 20 or 30. I haven't had it yeah. in a light breeze. It does shake around. But I'm just not brave enough to maybe leave it up if it gets too heavy. I'd say the Rhino Rack is supposedly self-supportable, um, but I, I, to be honest, I wouldn't have confidence in the wind. No, I wouldn't do it in the wind. Um, it's a lot of sail. Yeah, yeah, just do. Uh, and I've, I've found seen similar awnings still go over and break. So. Yeah, I found they're most susceptible in setting up with the wind. Like as I've got it part out and I haven't got any of the poles or anything down, uh, that's when I've I've got myself in trouble. That's how I broke mine yeah. originally. And Good morning. Um, Steve just woke it's me up to do a comparison video with him uh, for the Rhino Rack and the 30 Wing. Anyway, um, my turn to set up. Fair the... Tommy got up. I don't know if you noticed, but I'm a little bit short, so I have to climb all over the vehicle to get mine set up. Uh, but it's pretty straightforward. Um, I don't think it's as quick as the 30 second. Uh, it just isn't. Um, but it's not far off and it's still pretty easy. So, anyway, this is how I do it. As long as it does the job, mate. <laughs> right. Um, So now the way I've actually mounted mine, normally uh, they'd be on an L bracket, 
and they would sit up a little bit higher than the roof rack but I've actually mounted mine so the weight is getting taken by the roof rack so it's literally sitting right on it which makes it a little bit harder as far as getting the zips open um, but just undo this end I'll never touch one of these but I'll give it a go how hard can it be to undo a zip? Yeah, pretty straightforward. This is me being helpful, viewers. Which is rarely happens. And then the same as Steve's. Flip her up over the top. I'll let him do his straps though. So, so. Oh, he's ordering. Side steps, wheels, racks, and all helps. Put that drop down. I've snuck off behind the camera. Just pop those out. Now lift the door open, which is probably not ideal. Literally just grab this end, just walk around. Well, you're not meant to have the door open while you're uh, setting her up. Okay. So, made it a little harder than it had to be. Trap for young players. Shut your door. And then, um, what I've actually picked up from Steve, normally you have this uh, additional strap, which would just sort of thread through there, back on itself and clip onto here. And then you'd take this piece and clip it into there. Um, but what I've actually found is this has to keep going back in the car um, and I'm gonna lose this. Um, so what I've taken from Steve's 30 second is, that's all one piece. So what I've now done is just thrown a uh, quick carabiner on the end of that and I can just bring that round hook it onto my roof rack like that and again same as the 30 second just grab it put a bit of tension on it uh, and you're good to go that is it in its freestanding mode and as you can see it's not quite as rigid as the 30 second and I probably wouldn't be happy with that uh, in a wind so I need to grab my poles out I'm not short enough to stand under that <laughs> for this you need to have your tent poles Right, which all comes part of the kit. Throw them out. And then these are just a cam lock, the same as Steve's. Um, aluminium, so from a weight perspective, they're pretty good. Um, obviously height adjustable, so you can set them up how you want. But this is 30 seconds, it's not. about the same state as yours too. Looks like a good thing. Like well, call it a couple of minutes I suppose. Yeah. You know if I had my poles out and ready to go and whatever um, you can grab these things and just go and stick the velcros on. What do you think about the material though mate? Yeah. I think that's the same same? Oh, geez, they'd be close wouldn't they? Yeah. They feel much the same. Oh, I think you might be a little bit thicker actually. Yeah I'm not as thick as some. Uh, yeah I think yours might be a little bit heavier weight. I like yours from obviously how quick it is to set up. Um, I, so I'd be happy to use yours freestanding like that in still yeah. environment. Yeah. I wouldn't be happy of setting this up and letting it go without having those poles in. Yeah. I just wouldn't. Um, this has got a rain gutter, uh, which I've tucked up out of the way there. So this is a, a rain gutter they've got here, uh, which supposedly directs the water from running off the top and down you can capture water by putting it in a bucket or the like. But if you haven't got a bucket, it's going straight into the middle of your campsite. Like, you know, yeah, good un point. under your awning. And you're like, well, what's the point of that? Yeah. I don't know. Anyway, obviously with the poles on each corner, I can dip it if it rains. Well, that's an advantage you've got over mine. Mine's the height it is. And that's yep, yep. simple as that. So, so I haven't had it in a good rain yet, so I'm waiting. Um, I've been pretty happy with the seam seals uh, and all that sort of stuff. They're well constructed. <laughs> they, they seem to be. I, mate, I was real happy with it when it turned up. Uh, well, when I went and picked it up and uh, folded it for the first time for the weight of it. I thought they were, me, I thought they were going to be a lot lighter weight. So I think you've got me on setup time. Um, the ability to set up or have it freestanding, I think. Again, I don't know yeah. if I trust this. In freestanding mode, I've probably got you. And it's definitely more rigid. Oh, weight, no. What are you weight wise? That's um, 26 kilos it is. I don't think this is far off either. I think I'm up around the 22, 23 kilo. But I reckon um, for setting it up page. for the wind, 
Yeah, we'll check this spec. Setting it up in the wind, by the time I put legs down as well, yep. there's probably not a lot in it. That'd be my guess. It's just you have to put your legs up pretty well, yep. and I don't. And I guess um, in the wind, if I was to set this up in the wind on my own, and they're, they're both one person jobs, mm. uh, obviously, I'd go around, open up the one, stick a pole in, yeah. pull it out a bit more, stick the next pole in, go in. So you can set it up in a reasonable wind. Ultimately, if it's that windy, you're not setting them up you anyway. You probably don't want to, no. yeah. For, you know, eight, nine hundred thousand dollars worth of gear, uh, you don't want to be breaking it if up. If it blows over, you've wrecked it, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, so there's got the zips as well. Um, like you said, the same. Side Sidewalls. Um, they are a little bit expensive though. So, yeah, they're not cheap. Uh, Mine are like 450 bucks. Yeah. Um, I did pick this up second hand, so um, I think I paid about 400 bucks for it. I think I won it on eBay for 405 or 406. He took 400. Because I only paid the 400 bucks, I'm not obviously going to go out and spend, you know, 300 bucks or something on bloody side awnings or whatever. And frankly, I probably wouldn't use them anyway. That's really good. You've got a bit of a special trick with yours, Stephen. Well, I can jump into mine and move it. I've got no legs, and I've done just that before. Just drive it around, park it, shade out. It's that simple. Can't do that when you've got the legs down, so that's an advantage of mine. I might move a very short distance, like from here to there, or maybe just back it round. Um, but I'd be concerned, mate, if this caught a wind or something, I, yeah, I don't, I don't think it'd survive. Uh, so maybe, yeah, very, very short distance, but yeah, certainly not rigid enough like I've seen you driving around the park. And Probably the biggest challenge about this, or the one thing I dislike about this, is the packing it up. I'm trying to have to get all this rolled up and into the bag. Yeah. Um, I noticed that was the one thing with yours when I saw Steve doing his. Um, his bag is bigger. And... Um, no and comment, mate. And it just fits in, fits in better. Nothing. The, the bags need to be that little bit bigger, unless you're pretty good at, you know, um, contortionism or whatever, and getting your stuff rolled up. Um, this one's a bit of a challenge. So. What do you pack yours away? And then we'll uh, pack mine away. Give it five minutes. Away right. we go. So obviously tent poles. Um, that's the one thing I like about Steve's is I've got to carry tent poles. You know, tent poles and pegs. I suppose if you're carrying pegs, you're doing it anyway. Um, but these, these tent poles have to go with me everywhere. That dusty dog. Hello, dusty dog. Now, one thing I have found with these is um, normally they look like that to go around the tent poles, um, but for packing it away, they take up less space like that. It, it's a minor thing, um, but as I said, the bag's pretty tight on this, so you can use any bit of space you can, unclip. Uh, and I always just, I don't know whether you do this Steve, but I always loosen it off for the next yeah, time I, I want to set it up. Well in my case it's easy, I loosen it to do it over, undo it in the first place. Yeah, that's my antenna there, so that's not normally an issue. What I'm doing is just loosening the cams for the, the clips that go to the top. Again I should have done that when I was unpacking it. Pinch me buddy. So I just give it a bit of a shake here uh, when I've got this position, especially if it's been raining. I have had a little bit of rain on, not heavy rain. Um, and I get it into this position to shake it and all the water tends to just run off. Um, I don't know about yours, Steve, but it's about this stage um, when I'm setting up or breaking down, if there's any wind, this is when it's most, most vulnerable. Yep, uh, that'd it's be like a right. sail here, you've got all the support on your hinges up there, which are only plastic. I know that because I had to fix one. Um, and then you just sort of swing it up out of the way. But you've got like a clip arrangement to help put them all in. We have, yep, they just clip in one at a time. It's not the greatest of um, clips, it's only sort of plastic. It mine's got nothing like that at all. Uh, and then you sort of grab this rubber bit and bring it down and clip her in. This is obviously just our um, strap that goes around the back. I'm taking the just sort of tucking it in the back there as well. Uh, the roof gutter becomes a bit of a pain in the freckle, to be honest, because it's just I don't, you know, I don't understand what that's for. Um, so I've I got like a to... knife if you want. <laughs> yeah, well, mate, I've, I've actually considered it. Uh, so I've, again, just taken the, tucking it up there. It just takes up space. I really don't know why it's there. Um, so this is the technique. So, so you pretty much fold that like that. And then grab this down here. And then just start rolling. Change battery. And you want to roll real tight. Um, to try and get this to, to go in. Got a leg up there <laughs> to hold on. 
strap. I know this is going to be yeah, very similar to Stu's, but this is the, the bulk of it all sort of here. And this becomes a bit of a pain on the backside just to get it all locked in. Oh, Mainly God. because I'm little, but the issue. They're pretty much just down to the zip part, and this is the part that becomes a bit of a pain on the backside because it's so bulky. And I just throw legs in. It's not uh, the first time you're throwing a leg, Britta. Throwing the leg, yeah. Stick it under the seat. Again, this is the part that basically I don't like. It's the same with anything. Any of your tents, they're usually just not made um, to fit back in their bags, are they? Now that does look very tight. Very yes, tight. Yeah. In points, uh, obviously this being one of them, getting around this bend. Um, You know how they made it just that little bit bigger. Um, and this is where, as you can see, this is where the bulk is, right here. Um, so you kind of got to push it up and run it along. If they'd made that bag just a little bit bigger, um, I think the whole experience uh, would have been, yeah, that much better. Yeah, and the rest of it's pretty good because all your, all your weight's up the front. Normal sized person could probably just, buddy, Stand up there and do this, but for the viewers at home, Brett's a bit of a midget. It's not for, for reference, uh, and that's it. I've done about 30 seconds, but does the job though. And I've got to pack up my pole. Before we, before we do mine, I'll pack up. Yep. Do you reckon you'd set that up for a lunch stop? Would you set that up, or is it just not worth the hassle? Mate, um, that's probably <laughs> that's a hard question to answer. Probably, absolutely no shade, and I needed shade, yeah, absolutely, um, without a doubt. If it wasn't too hot, then I probably wouldn't bother. Um, mainly because that packing up, the packing up's a bit of a pain in the backside, to be honest. So, if it went away as easy as it comes out, yeah, absolutely without a doubt. But packing it up and getting that zip around it, if that bag, mate, was just that smidge bigger, it'd make all the difference. It'd make a me. difference, yeah, yeah. Absolutely, just being able to pack it up. The packing up's a pain in the backside. Um, getting it out, setting it up, great, absolutely love it. Um, don't get me wrong, like, I love it for, for what I pay for it, 400 bucks. Whether I would have paid full price for it, I don't know. Um, I think they're about 800 bucks, 900 bucks uh, retail. I think yours was. Mine's just about a thousand bucks too retail. Much more. Yep. Mate, I, I like. <laughs> I'm looking at yours for how easy. It, well, I haven't seen you pack it away yet. Well, um, you will in a sec. But uh, yeah, I imagine that's a bit easier than that one. But again, yeah. if they made the bag just a little bit bigger, that my whole experience would be different. Make it easier. Yeah, absolutely. I've noticed with yours, mate, um, up in underneath, I went to add a LED light. Yep. Uh, just an LED light strip like you see them do with lots of the light bars and uh, lots of the, sorry, uh, racks and the awnings. You've got all this real estate. Um, could you reckon you could get an LED light I, strip I don't think there I'd put one somewhere? On there. To be honest, I wouldn't put one on there because yep. you've got the brackets here. And they go hard up against. But you could, realistically, there's a gap though, so you yep. could go in the middle. You, you think? Yeah, you could. What I have seen done is. In here, yep. where it goes, the ape frame joins together. We'll do it. It's still hollow, right? I've seen them do it. Yep. Slide those LED strips inside there. Okay. And the LED yep, shines yep. out that. Obviously. Mine ended up being mounted under the bottom of the rack uh, because when I swing mine out, because each section's on a pole, the last section, um, oh sorry, yeah, the last section to come out is mounted down the bottom, yeah. which means there's no aluminium for me to put an LED light on. Uh, so I had to put it outside and actually on the on the roof rack. Have a look, so, but you're six foot tall, yeah? I am six foot. The roof of the Land Cruiser is just over two metres high, so that gives you an idea of what my reach has to be to get there. Um, I'd say they're similar quality. Mate, seam ceiling, colour, everything is pretty much same, Everything's same, isn't it? Same yeah. If you had to say, you'd say they're coming out of the same factory, wouldn't you? You'd, you'd go close. These are South African, I think. Okay, yes, yep. I don't know. Now these similar. This uh, this is not the LU cab though, no, is it? The no. one that Andrew St Pierre uh, Andrew St Pierre about. is the genuine LU cab. Yep. This is the thirty second awning, which I'm led to believe is exactly the same as the ostrich wing, which is also South African. Yep. And I looked at ostrich wing recently, and I can't see a difference in them at all. Right, those South Africans, they uh, they look to do a good product, don't they? They do. Yep. They're into their camping. The pack up. And now you've seen that leg get pulled down. Mm -hmm. 
It's very similar to, to yours. Uh, metal hook. Yeah. And that's just, oh, sorry. Yeah. That's just the cam hook. Cam. Okay, so your cam. Like a ratchet strap. Is metal. Yeah, um, that's all metal. Just button differences. Mine is plastic. Yeah. And um, there's no clip. It's literally yeah, cam. That, that section of mine is separate, which means, you know, you, yeah. you pack it away, you put it somewhere else, you lose it, and yeah. you bug it. So in my case, well, that's how you do your tightening. Just literally that cam yep. tightens it up. It's the same deal. I don't, you can drag it on the ground. You do what you like. doesn't matter. Now, while you're doing that, tell me what you do with that clip when you are originally setting up that hook. You said you don't like oh, the yeah, hook. I did a mod. I, I don't know if you can zoom up on this at all. This hook just literally sits in this ring and they carry the, the strap separately. Ah, okay. But they leave it in the awning, which seems completely pointless to me because it falls out and bangs on your mirror. It hits the mirror on the 200 every time. So what I did is just zip tied it on. Can't come anywhere. It's still gonna be stored in the same place. So normally though, you would carry that separately. If, you, if it was out of the box, that strap, would, whole strap would come off and you stick that somewhere else. Is that well, what yeah. you do? Yeah. The way they say to store it is in with the awning still, and I'll show you where okay. it goes. Right Pull them down as much as practical. Now I've got a similar situation to you. I forgot to put my straps up over the roof. Yep, yep. So what do you got? Me. You got three of those, I've though? Got three. Yeah, I often do that. Close her up, and then you find you've left the bastards oh, no stuck idea. in the top. I often do that too. But yep. anyway, that was that. Now I've got no catches or anything like you have. So it just stays there. You just hold it as best you can. Yep. Which I actually like your catch idea. Grab all the material. You take it up like that, so the bulk is at the front. Okay, so you go up pretty much square, Straight rather up. than mine was only sort of... Okay, so you just... Straight up again, and then I just do a roll. I'm basically just trying to hold it. Yep. Get your cam strap there. Once you've got that sort of done up, yep. give it a nudge. Oh, okay, there. that's Velcro, right? That's eh? Velcro, and that's all it is. Once you give that a nudge, build it in place, the rest of them, a really simple. So mine are those, again though, it's just a plastic cam type things, uh, which I would probably take as a preference over Velcro, to be honest. In um, some cases. I don't, I don't mind Velcro, but I just know that eventually it wears uh, and it isn't as effective. But that being said, those plastic things can snap, but I suppose they're yeah, easily replaceable. Now they tell you to store the strap here anyway, which is why I zipped it on. Okay. Because that's where they store them. They just wedge it in there. It stays there. So with mine, with that amount of bulk at the front, if I folded it up as loosely as you just have there, like, there's no way I was getting those zips done up. No, I was looking at that. Yeah, not a chance. And I can already see that bag hanging over with the amount of extra room you got there. And, I, and it's literally this simple to zip. A lot of room in this bag. You mongrel, yeah. It's got a second zip. I don't understand the reason for it. You can zip either way, but... Yeah, okay. Then it's got a flap here which sort of protects water ingress. Stops the, the water going in, yep. And the bag's got plenty of room in it, like there's still room in there. Yeah, uh, absolutely. I actually does that, often carry other aerials and things. Does that flap though when you're driving along? I don't hear it. Okay. It may. Yep. But don't hear it. I don't really hear um, it. That definitely doesn't, obviously, because it's yeah, that's really tighter than a fish's. You're right, the, the rhino rack profile uh, is good. It, it's a bit longer than one of your standard buddy you know, fold out King's jobbies. Um, but we're certainly talking a lot higher quality in the pair of them. Oh, yeah. I uh, think your Fox Wing looks nicer done up, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. That's if I a... had the pick of downside to mine, I don't think that's as pretty yeah. as what yours is when it's packed away. Yeah. The profile on mine is probably, what, two thirds yeah. of yours? But again, I'd, I'd, I'd take a bit bigger bag and a bigger profile, um, you know, for just packing up purposes over that. Yes, there is no effort, and I would definitely, on the side of a track, wind, rain, doesn't matter, if I want shade, You'd be able to so set that up. to do it, yeah. then why not just open it up? So that's it, with that one, I'd have to think about it. Yeah. I'd go, you know, is it hot enough, am I going to get shade, how long until we're going, you know what I mean, before yeah. I'd sort of go, yeah, I'll just whip it out. Okay, now that's something I've noticed with yours, that, uh, uh, as you know, I've got a big antenna coming, and I've been considering mounting it on the back of the car, um, similar to what you'll see on Steve's here, he's got the coding. But I just realised you won't be able to have your tenor no, I can't set run up, up the awning up. while you've got the awning up. No. I, I was looking to do something where I could have the antenna on the back of mine and still set up the awning. 
but that's why I'm looking at the front, so I don't think that's feasible. But I've actually chosen to accept the fact that I can't use it when I want the awning out. Anything else to add, mate? Anything you prefer over one or the other, or you're happy with your decision? Having looked at the both of them, I'm happy with mine. Yep. But I can see why people buy yours. There's nothing wrong with yours. Yep. I wouldn't say one's better than the other. They're different to each other. That's basically the guts of it. That's a tough, mate. I love mine. There's no doubt about it. Like I said, if the bag was a little, like, I know I keep harping <laughs> on about it, but the bag, if yeah. the bag was a bit bigger, I'd probably like the lighter weight. And same as you, mate. We've all we've all stuffed ball bars and bars and plates and yeah. things on our cars. So we've got to start being a bit weight conscious. Uh, so I'm not unhappy with the little bit of weight saving there, but um, mate, watching yours get set up. Yeah. That's it's why I'm never going for a rooftop. It's definitely 30 seconds. This truck's yeah. heavy enough. Yeah, yeah absolutely. All anyway, right. everybody, thanks for watching. If you like what you've seen here, feel free to like and subscribe to my channel, VKTUD, Brett's channel, Den Monkey. And uh, we will no doubt catch up with you for the next one. Have a good one. Thanks for stopping by. See you on the next one. Bye.